Game Devs, welcome back. Godot has a built-in basic player controller that handles basic movement, all in one script. But may I propose a better way to keep track of the player's state? Yes, that's right, a finite state machine. To put it simply, a finite state machine is a way to organize your code by breaking it down into separate states. Each state has its own code and behavior, and the machine can only be in one state at a time. For example, a character in a game can be in an idle state, a running state, or a jumping state. Now, it can be a bit confusing when you're just starting out, but have no fear. Let's build a finite state machine from the ground up in Godot 4 for player movement. We will look at idle, moving, and jumping states, and also at a dash state. This is a great way to keep your code organized and scalable as your project grows. So if you were a little confused, Let's clear up that state of confusion. Okay, let's set up the player scene. I added a character body to the node that I will use for the player. I also added a sprite to the node to show the player sprite and a collision shape to the node to detect collisions. Now here's the important part. I also added empty nodes to the player to hold each state and added scripts to each of the node states. I also added a script to the player state controlled and saved the scene. I saved all the scripts in a separate folder called state machine. So here's how this all works. The player state control script will act as a manager of sorts that will manage all the states that the player will be in and handle the physics and movement of the player. Think of it as a cool DJ spinning tracks at the club. The player's state will act as a base class that all the scripts will inherit from. I explained how inheritance works in more detail in these videos. The links will be in the description. But for now, just note that this script will act as our cool DJ's mixer equipment of sorts. This is where he controls when a track enters and exits. None of the actual movement logic will be called in here. That is not to say that there can't be functions in the base class. But in this example, we will not be using any. And lastly, the state scripts. These will be tracks that the cool DJ will be playing. This script will handle the individual states of the player based on input. And it also handles the change states. This all makes sense, right? Let's take a closer look and I'm sure things will all fall into place. In the player state control script, there's a change state function, which takes a string value for the new state name. In this function, we will exit and enter the current state that the player is in, which is inherited from the player state class. Remember that I mentioned I made this folder called state machine? Well, it is in here that I created the player state script. This script does not need to be attached to a node, and it's this base class that all the state scripts will inherit from. This may not look like much at first, but believe me when I say, this is the meat and potatoes of our finite state machine. The script extends node, and I gave it the class name player states, which all the player states can inherit from. Then I created a variable to reference the player and made functions for enter state, exit state, and handle input. In the enter state, we will set the player equal to the player node, which stores a reference to the player node. Notice that in the script, the exit state and handle input functions will not be handling any logic. Instead, they will be used as placeholders for the current state of the player. As mentioned, the change state function of the player state controls script changes the player's state to a new one based on a new state name, which is provided as a string like idle state or jumping state. It dynamically switches from the current state to the new state. First, it checks if there is a currently active state. If the player is in a state like moving or idle, this condition will be true. Then it calls the exit state method of the current state before switching to the new state. The exit state method allows the current state to clean up or finalize anything it needs to do before leaving, like stopping animations or resetting values. 
The function retrieves the node corresponding to the new state using the getNode method and assigns it to the current state. The new state name is the name of the new state node passed as a string, which corresponds to the scene structure. The idle state would be a node under the player state controlled scene. This switches the current state variable to the new state. After receiving the new state, this check ensures that the new state node exists. This prevents errors if an invalid state name is passed. Once the new state is confirmed to exist, this line calls enter state on the new state. The enter state self method initializes the new state and passes the self argument, which refers to the player node. This allows the state to interact and control the player, and this is where the player officially transitions into the new state. Now since this script extends character body 2D, we can make a variable for the last facing direction and handle the player's movement and input in the physics loop. We can check horizontal input UI left and right to determine the player's movement direction. If there is movement, update the last facing direction to remember which way the player was last facing. This will be useful later when we are implementing the dash to be able to dash from the idle state. If the player is in the air, not on the floor, gravity is applied. Then the current state is checked and the handle input function is called to process the player's behavior in that state. This structure delegates the handling of the player input behavior to the active state, making the code modular and easy to extend as new states are added. Now remember, each state is responsible for its own input handling, and the main physics process just ensures that the right state is managing the player's actions. Then we simply call move and slide so that the player is able to move, and as a final touch, the player sprite is flipped horizontally based on the movement direction to ensure that the sprite faces the correct way. A great place to start with the states is the idle state. For simplicity, I used the default input for the player. Godot recommends that we change this, but this will be fine for this example. The only input we need to implement is for the dash, but more on that later. This script extends the base class player state meaning it inherits all the functionality from the player state class. It can also add or override methods like the enter state. Now in this case, player state has an enter state method that takes care of some general setup, like storing the reference to the player node. Calling super ensures that the parent's class logic is executed before adding new functionality specific to the state. Why super? Well, without calling super, you'd lose the functionality provided by the base class player state, potentially causing issues like not properly setting up the player node reference. This line sets the player's horizontal velocity's x component to zero when entering the state. It's used to stop any horizontal movement that might have been happening before switching to the state. For example, if you're entering an idle state, you want to ensure that the player stops moving horizontally. The handle input function checks for player input to determine which state to switch to. If the UI accept action is pressed while the player is on the ground, it switches to the jumping state. If there's horizontal movement input, left or right, it switches to the moving state. And if the dash action is pressed, it switches to the dashing state, allowing the player to dash from idle. In the jumping state script, the enter state method is called when the player enters the jumping state. As before, it uses super to ensure the base player state logic is executed. Then it sets the player's vertical velocity to the jump velocity to initiate the jump. In the handle input function, if the player lands on the floor, it transitions to the idle state. If the dash action is pressed midair, the player transitions to the dashing state, allowing for an aerial dash. In the moving script, the enter state function is not needed here because this state does not require any special setup when entered. All the necessary behavior like updating velocity is handled directly in the handle input function. If there is horizontal input left or right, the player's velocity is updated based on the input direction and speed. If no movement is detected, the player transitions to the idle state. If the player presses the jump action, UI accept while on the floor, the player transitions to the jumping state, and if the player presses the dash action, well, 
they transition to the dashing state, allowing for dashing from the moving state. Now let's set up input for the dash. We go to Project, Project Settings, Input Map. We add a new action called Dash. And click on the plus to add an event. I will map the dash to the X key. Click OK and close and it's all set up. The dashing state script allows the player to dash in a specific direction for a short period. I have set up constants for dash speed and dash duration and a variable for the dash timer that tracks how much time is left for the dash. This timer starts the dash duration and decreases over time. In the enter state, Super calls the parent's class enter state method to ensure that the necessary base functionality is executed. Then the player's horizontal velocity is set based on the current movement direction. If no input is detected, that is the player isn't pressing left or right, it defaults to the last facing direction, to dash in the direction that the player was last moving in. Then the player's velocity is set to dash in the desired direction, and the dash timer is reset to the full duration of the dash. In the handle input function, the dash timer decreases each frame by the time passed, which tracks how long the dash has been active. When the dash ends, the dash timer is less than or equal to zero. It checks for movement input. If there is input, left or right, it switches to the moving state. And if no input is detected, it transitions to the idle state. And there you have it, a simple and easy state machine to handle player movement. Thanks for watching. We discussed a lot today. Core mechanics and no gimmicks. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload another video. And speaking of other videos, why not check out another one of my videos here. This has been Diragu Games.